everybody, and welcome to the Onward VR Master League. My name is Nightfire with two E's. I'm joined by TFH with a swear word. How are you today, Todd? Oh, pretty good. How are you, Knight? I got no complaints. I'm excited for the action that we have in front of us. Two up-and-coming teams, if you will. I guess Legionnaire is certainly not an up-and-coming team, but... Uh, they've been around. They've been around for a while, but they're starting to do better this season, I would say. They're on a three-game win streak coming into today. And they're going to be going up against SEAL Team Bravo, who we've been keeping an eye on this season as a new squad. They're looking pretty good. Yeah, this new team formed by Raz and the Bowden Brothers. Mm -hmm. the, the, Definitely. The trio, uh, the trio, right? Yeah, the trio. The trio, yeah. Raz, Breeze, and Bowden are all brothers. They formed a team together because, you know, why not? Y'all are brothers and you've ever formed a team together. <laughs> Let's do this. And it's been working really well for them. Yeah, it's... Uh... A solid active roster. Speaking of, we can take a look quickly now at Legionnaire's active roster. They have everyone in lobby. It is going to be Nick Dragon, Eric, Raider, Mayhow, and Mr. Sirius. Mr. Sirius, is that a new pickup or a name change? Mr. Sirius has been on the squad since season, uh, season seven, I think. Yes, yes, season six. So oh. he's kind of been around. He's just not been as present as the other ones, but he's still on the squad yeah, that's nonetheless. Right. Usually we'll see uh, DMT, who's their uh, other sixth, if you will. Uh, he'll usually be brought into that main five. We'll get to see how Mr. Sirius does today up against the SEAL Team Bravo squad. Still waiting on one more, but we can take a look at their roster. Over there they have Raz, Stay Calm, Seth Bowden Gaming, Cool Breeze, Diesel, Drunkdom MR, and drunk drummer drunk drummer thank you and i am leet is that a new pickup i'm leet new to the i am leet is a new pickup i have not oh he's been uh, he's been around though he's been uh no i'm so no i'm sorry no he's a he is a res... the, the website is messing me up man i know it's okay. he is a brand new player <laughs> he's I been agree. messing around with the connoisseur thing and i thought those were teams he was on it i did too i was looking at the <laughs> <laughs> the history there as well but yeah i think he is a, a new pickup we'll see if he's brought in today i would be surprised if they brought him in up against legionnaires <laughs> and as we've said they are looking pretty good today or this the last couple of games at least uh right. todd what are your thoughts on this series what do you think we're gonna see today slow fast what kind of action I think we're going to see slow. Legionnaires are known for, you know, using the full use of the ground, and uh, I don't think it's going to be any different from them. SEAL Team Bravo as well just really like to play the game slowly. They like to be very methodical. Uh, the Bowden Brothers came from Aussie teams, and the Aussie play style was to play a bit slower, you know, kind of understand where the enemy is, and then right. they kind of brought that over to this team here, and this team has embodied that reality. That Aussie mentality. <laughs> well, we got to move fast because both teams are in lobby now, and we got to get through our pick bans. Todd, what we got on the docket today? Well, Legion are going to be banning Cargo, and SEAL Team are going to be banning Snowpeak. Cargo is kind of the uh, sh showing their hand in their philosophies, right? Yeah, um, I think Legion just might not be... Uh, so happy with those close range maps, they want to be able to control a full size battlefield, be able to kind of spread the attack or defense well, out. You know, I hate to cut you off, but I, I, we got to get into the map pick too, and that brings up my point. If this, if that is their strategy, it kind of is curious why SEAL Team Bravo would have chosen a long range map. I, it, it makes me wonder, you know, why would you? I, I'm, I'm thinking maybe that Snow Peak ban is their weakness, not necessarily a Legion strength. Yeah, I think in that it just might not be a map that they have practiced. It's a newer map. We've seen it a lot more in the league. Legionnaires would be that kind of team to play Snow Peak and bring it as kind of a wild card kind of map against ya. And I think SEAL Team Bravo recognized that and they were like, we don't want to play this. Over on SEAL Team Bravo, we do have their active roster. Raz, State Com, Seth Bowden, Diesel, and Cool Breeze. So we're not seeing the new addition on the STB squad come in just yet. Just yet. What? I just wanna, oh, Diesel is a pickup for SEAL Team. He kind of carried over from, what was it? Space Force. Yes. The remnants of Space Force are spreading out. 
Fusel's been in here Finding for a while. <laughs> yeah, he was, uh, what was it? A he lot was... of twos. Yeah. In season two. Been, a, been, around, like that. been around the ringer, honestly. He's been to, I think this is his now fifth team in the VRML. Apparently it's paying off. It's working out for him pretty well. Seal Team Bravo have been doing quite well this season. What is their overall rank? Yeah. I'm curious. I know they're ranked 11th uh, in comparison to the 14th of Legionnaires. Looking at that too. Quickly getting those numbers in before the round starts. Seal Team Bravo is currently 11th worldwide and Legionnaires is 14th. We have a gold-silver matchup, but the placement's not too far different. See how this series shakes up between rank 11 and rank 14 as we dive into round one of map one. Baby. Yeah, we're going to have the north spawn for SEAL Team Bravo right off the get-go. Some shots going off. That's Diesel. He's just trying to call people out. And yeah, now Seal Team Bravo are slowing up a little bit. Kind of just trying to be able to find these different little spaces that they can probably try to find picks or be able to methodically insert themselves. They're kind of just trying to form a line while holding the high ground. As the map stands right now, they kind of have a bias toward the north side with that three-man squad and sending two individual people down on the south side. And Diesel's able to find Mr. Serious. I got him, Tango One, Brothel. Who's hanging out in the brothel building behind Middle Hotel. Couple more confirmation shots come out, but he's already dead, so the damage is done and done. Cool Breeze is gonna take some shots onto the OBJ. Think he sees someone, but he's not able to find that pick just yet. Just firing on objective building. I thought I could see a guy, I'm pretty sure it's not. And some return fire coming from Raider. He's not able to find anyone as the rotations are just a little too quick. Now, one thing that SEAL Team Bravo is really good at is they're really good at finding little hidey holes and just waiting there, waiting for the enemy to expose themselves and just being able to pop out at the right time. Out there, that was spring. More shots coming out here and there. They're not really finding any purchase. They're, I think they're just pre-firing different little windows and seeing if they can make purchase on those. But right now, both teams are just playing it super conservatively and using up the minutes that they can in order to be able to wait the other enemy out and try to wait for them to make the big move and punish them when they do. Daycom makes his move. I do believe that he was spotted. Raider. No, he wasn't. Raider does not try to go for that pick. I think the Legionnaire's defense right now is just hold every single cap spot and wait for Bravo to come to them. As it stands right now, Legionnaires are down one man compared to SEAL Team Bravo. It's 5v4. 
And Stay Calm is working his way to the objective building. He has to cover or cross in front of the North Helicopter 2 story, which is occupied with roommates on both first and second floors. He is watching that pretty closely. Nink's Dragon is able to find Cool Breeze. Evening it up for Legionnaires. And Stay Calm is able to get a nice pick onto Raider through the window. Now Mayho knows exactly what's going on. I think he's going to get a little antsy here, try to find this refrag. Yeah, the laser is coming out there, but Calm just hasn't crossed in front of that light of sight just yet. Mayho ducks it just in time for Calm to... Get there, and Inks Dragon's able to find Raz as well. Legionnaires are looking pretty good. Eric shuts down that push from Calm. As the rest of them try to move in, Mayho is able to find Diesel. One more round. And now there's only one seal left. And that is Seth. Formerly Dirt Diver, but Mayho is able to find Seth. And Legionnaires will get the first point. That was a uh, nice setup on Seal Team Bravo's side. They did a good job of getting out the uh, the coverage across. Like you said, they split up. They had that nice line, and then they had guys on the on the north and south to pinch on objective, and they just didn't quite sync up like they should have. Yeah, uh, the attack from Seal Team Bravo was definitely a little staggered. We kind of saw people coming in one at a time, and the Legionnaires were just kind of able to adapt to that. Be able to focus on one target at a time and just shoot them down as they go. Solid first round for Legionnaires on the defense, too. They had a nice setup, and losing one early like that, certainly hard to deal with. Uh, surprised that they didn't really over rotate. What you see a lot of times is. When they lose one like that, they'll do an uh, players will go for, teams will go for an instant rotation, and that actually is like the uh, the death of that squad, right? That's exactly what the enemy wants when they get that early pick, is they want to capitalize on the uh, on the enemy rotating to try and cover gaps from that lost uh, lost teammate. And Legion just didn't do that. They held their ground. They knew that their coverage was solid. They just it just became tighter, right? They just lost their Overwatch into the front space, and they just waited for that kill box on OBJ. Yeah, and that Overwatch is definitely the weakest link in the chain there, but it's kind of more of an extraneous part. So the plan definitely allowed for it to be able to be cut off and just wait for the enemy to come to them in a emergency situation that that would require. But we will have mirroring spawns for round two. And Nynx Dragon, I don't know if we went over this before, is a reservist for the Legionnaires. Yeah, the formerly uh, Cold Steel. Doing O today. Has... So doing good for him so far in round one. Yeah, he's a really good player. A really solid reservist pickup to have for the Legionnaires. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him maybe join the squad later. Who knows? Just hyping stuff up. <laughs> a good way to get in, right? Become a reservist, get your experience playing with good teams, and then find a squad that fits you best. Yeah, we see a lot of really good players kind of cycling around on the reservist squad, just, uh, you know, going team to team. And then, you know, that one time they just find something that they really gel with and uh, they just become a core member. Bit of pre-firing coming out on all the Legionnaire side as they try to shoot windows themselves. Mr. Sirius is going to take a couple of shots, but he's able to duck away. Thought that hiding behind a tree almost comically could uh, prevent it from being seen, but uh, SEAL Team Bravo are just able to identify that. Eric dumps a mag into middle hotel there uh doesn't find the pick that he's looking for i believe he was trying to take on seth there but uh seth just ducks away the only thing that that's done is just give away eric's position
Four minutes and 15 seconds left in the round. Plenty of time for these teams to work out and hash out a strategy, even on the fly if needed be. Smoke going off on the north side there, probably to facilitate a rotation. Especially on a map like this where it's just so open. Rotations are the time that you are most likely to get shot. Because you're just walking across the desert. You're going to stick out like a sore thumb and any enemy can identify you by the color of your uniform even a mile away. Seeing teams go through more mags here. Just trying to pre-fire places where they think the enemy is going to be or where they briefly see people going to be. But CLT Bravo are facilitating close range gameplay on this map by just holding angles, not peeking out, and waiting for Legionnaires to come to them. We might have a good pick on that. Air Raider or Eric here as... He peeks out a little too far into the street there. Eric knows exactly what's going on, and that is not the route he should be going unless he can figure out something. He's going to try to go with this peek onto Calm, but Calm's in the dark room there, and on both that's such a powerful spot to have. I'm not hearing so much of the communication coming out from Legionnaires. Calm's able to find Eric. Now a couple of the attempt at the refrag is going to come out. It won't happen as calm is just too far down. He's in cover. Legionnaires are currently down two members. Current manager report is five to three. Bravo's side. Raz is able to find Malho. That was a refrag as well. Nynx Dragon's going to try to push on Seth here. Actually, no. He's going to go outside of the middle hotel there, which means that he's going to be flanked just from his own movements. Going into the enemy kill box like that. Oh, now he's going to go off there. Try to toss a nade on Seth, but that won't happen. Seth rotates into another room in order to avoid being immediately seen. Now it becomes a game of holding angles. Seth himself gets flanked. He's a little distracted. This is perfect time for Nynx to work it, and he will take the opportunity just like that. Seth goes down. And Seal Team Bravo and Legionnaires are looking a lot closer than they were before. Breeze, go, Bree, Breeze finds Mr. Sirius. Now only one Legionnaire remains, and it is the reservist, Nynx. Utility is out on objective. The coverage is not great. But it looks like he's going to uh, try to attempt the cap anyways. 14 seconds left. The time is running down now. Breeze is making his rotation onto the objective to try to defend it. Nynx is in the smoke. He's going to try to attempt a three-second cap here. He gives up on that, and now he's going to go for the kills, but the time runs out. And Seal Team Bravo will get their point on a technicality. Yeah, it was a technicality, but, you know, they did a good job of holding up a push that could have had maybe an extra 30 seconds if it wasn't caught up inside that three-story, right? A few key defensive angles just pausing Seal Team Bravo enough uh, to prevent them uh, from pushing on time onto objective. If he had another 10 seconds, he could have proned up there and potentially snagged that objective. It was certainly a decent attempt, but 
Steel Team Bravo, to your credit, uh, to your point earlier, they had a very tight defense, kind of similar to how Legionnaires locked up their defense once they lost their Overwatch. Uh, they really, just from the start, had a very tight defense. And the longest angle they had was the one from uh, spawn down to the south lane. Yeah, being able to hold your angles and hold very crucial crossing points is just a huge part of this game. And mm -hmm. being able to force the enemy into awkward positions can work wonders for your team. And that's exactly what SEAL Team Bravo is doing. They caught Legionnaires up in a very awkward position. They slowed down the push on the south side. They weren't, al they weren't allowing the rotations coming from the other sides to help reinforce it. And the rest is history. They let Legionnaires run the timer down. And you know, that strat works for now, but there's certainly also some other angles they could have covered to catch that push from SEAL Team Bravo way earlier. A lot of times with that objective, teams don't even allow squads to cross those two south buildings without at least two smokes or going full prone. You know, and they kind of had a free reign of that south street uh, with very little coverage. So maybe uh, <clears throat> I, it works for SEAL Team Bravo, you know, but there's all sorts of different ways to skin a cat, right? Yeah, there's there's definitely different ways that you can play this game. What I would have expected to see, especially with teams kind of running the time right now, is we have a hard push at the beginning to get to good spots mm -hmm. and then the slow play coming out of that. So you could facilitate a rotation if needed be, but... You know, these teams have certain ways they've played, and Legionnaires are a very well-played team. They've been playing since, what, season three? For three, yeah. Two. They're going to play how they've always played. Cool Breeze is able to find Raider. That's a great pickup in the first 30 seconds for SEAL Team Bravo. It was an attempt to get to a very high location. It, like always, this Overwatch character seems to just keep getting shot right at the beginning of the round. Confirmed kills or confirmed shots coming out from Raz, leaving nobody unchecked. It's kind of interesting when you look at those confirm kills. A lot of times, those bullets are nowhere. Like, it just shows you how hard it is to aim in this game. <laughs> when you watch someone try and confirm a dead, non-moving body, and the rounds are still, you know, hitting up and down. And certainly a, a skill set these players have developed. Yeah, sometimes it's that. Sometimes it's uh, the, the bodies in this game are client-side. So what we see up. in... Our caster vision here can be a little different than what the player sees. Maybe the body's rolled down a bit. And it's also player different from player to player, so it can be a really weird experience at times. That is a good point. We're kind of seeing Legionnaires getting a little bit more peaky here. I'm seeing a little bit more laser action coming out from here. Maho is able to find Seth Bowden. And that's going to even up... This is the, um, the coverage to 4-4 four to four right now. And Legionnaires this time, I think, are kind of doubling down on, you know, rolling as a squad here. Or, I'm sorry, SEAL Team Bravo are. Um, they're, they're all pushing one lane. They haven't tried to push out on a flanker except for the one person, but he went down. They're not doing 2-3 two, pushes or 2-2 two, two pushes. Raz is in a little bit of trouble. But he's able to navigate his way to some safety right now behind this car. One thing I've noticed is Legionnaires have a very off-objective defense right now. They've got three people in the Marsoc Hills and only one person directly on objective. This could be very dangerous if the on-objective member goes down, but they're relying on holding these angles so hard that no one can even get near it.
Couple shots go yeah, down there. Do find Raz, but it's not enough to do any major damage. All the lasers are pointing toward the smokes here. The push is coming out now. Mr. Sirius is able to find Diesel. Stay calm is able to find Eric. And Sirius is able to get a confirm in there as well. The push comes out from Calm and Rass. Two of the three remaining members now down to two as Sirius finds Calm. And Raz begins his push as well. He's trying to use that wall to its fullest coverage, but the member at that bungalow building has been a pain for this SEAL Team Bravo offense, and it will rain Sirius again as Sirius is able to find Raz. And now Breeze is the last remaining member here. He's got three, maybe four Legionnaires to worry about here soon, as this res is going to come out here onto Eric. Breeze is in a place where he's pretty much in the open, and he knows that this objective is being very well defended. Only one minute and 15 seconds left. The pressure is on now. If it hasn't been before. Breeze is able to find Dragon. Now he's going to try to rotate onto the street. Probably use that wall for some coverage, but he's immediately going to be caught out by Ma Malho. And Legionnaires will get another Volk point. A push almost worked <laughs> for SEAL Team Bravo. You know, they just didn't have quite enough utility. They were, they, all, they needed like two more smoke grenades on that wall. And they would have had Stay Calm uh, and Raz, I believe, get across into that two-story pretty easily. Once you have control of that two of that two-story that they were crossing to, that, that objective becomes pretty hard to hold. You have to cover the angles. You have to cover both windows in the in the first and second floor. You have to watch for entry points from the street. There's all sorts of different angles that you normally aren't set up defensive-wise to hold that open up once that object once that building gets cap, uh, taken over by the enemy and. A really good job of, uh, I think it was Mr. Sirius in that uh, offbeat position. None of the SEAL Team Bravo was looking at him. None of them expected the shots to be coming from there. They all thought it was from objective building. And you even saw Raz, while he was being shot, shoot at the wrong, shoot at the objective building. He wasn't even shooting where the bullets were coming from. So, uh, yeah, he... it's a nice hold on Legion's side. Yeah, he definitely thought it was, uh, coming in from Marsoc Towers or Objective Building, but no one was expecting that uh, APC Bungalow spot to come into effect. It's such a very open position as well. It definitely, uh, it definitely attests to the Legionnaires' boldness when they set up a defense being, setting up, and let's just talk about that for a second. Four people off of the defense for people off of objective. And being able to hold the defense just like that. Well, we're gonna see how SEAL Team Bravo sets up their defense now. As Legionnaires will try to break that. Looks like they're gonna actually spread out here, do something kind of similar to what Legionnaires did, but bias a little bit more to the south side as they set up in the two-story that we were literally just talking about earlier. Breeze is able to find Eric, and Maho is gonna get that refrag. So Breeze is able to be revived, and Raz is gonna come over to work with that along with uh, Stay Calm. Revive does come out. Legionnaires are being a little bit quicker on the pace now. I think they uh, they definitely had the uh, the warning shots and they hurt, uh, adhered, adhered to them. As they did run the clock last offensive round that they had. Seth is 
Gonna try to find Ninx, but Ninx is actually gonna almost find Seth himself, but the angle holding here is just incredibly tight. That you could get shot through the window, but you're in cover and still being able to hold a lane. That was a really good, uh... From Ninx. Shot from the corner. Seth threw his eyes there, and then he crouched down under the window and shifted to the other one and popped up trying to take out Seth. Still trying to do that now against uh, Diesel. Now, Raz is going to be able to find Sirius. Legionnaires are slowly getting picked off here as the round goes by. 4 minutes 15 seconds remaining. The Smokes will come out now, trying to facilitate this push into the second story, the uh, West Dumpster Building. Breeze is able to find Mayho as well. And now Legionnaires are only two. With Nynx, Dragon, and Raider coming back. I mean, if, if Nynx isn't on Legionnaires by the end of this, I, I'd be hit hugely surprised. He's been putting in good work for them. Raider is able to find Diesel. That's a trade, actually. And now the SEAL Team Bravo defense is actually... The, the on-objective defense, I should say, is opened up. Seth Bowden will try to rotate across and close that gap, but... This is still going to be very challenging for Ninx because SEAL Team Bravo is defending every way to get to the objective. Now Ninx is beginning to make his push up along the wall, hugging it as hard as he can. No extreme positions from SEAL Team Bravo this time. Nick's is going to check the code. It looks like he's actually just going to run up and think that it's going to be almost exactly like the Legionnaire's defense was, but Bowden's going to have other ideas. Raz is going to shut that down, actually, and Seal Team Bravo will even it up 2-2. Two to two. Started off not so good for Seal Team Bravo with the trade, but Raz coming in, getting them that advantage, and then, I mean, they just... Legionnaire's just shut down. Uh, they just couldn't get through that defense, and it was a really nice hold. It, as soon as you lose two like that and you haven't found any kills, uh, it's certainly disheartening as the offense. And I think it's like yeah. moments like that where have that one standout player or even you know maybe two players that are above and beyond uh, the rest of the team, they can help get you back into things. You know, they're, those are the guys that can get multiple kills in a round. Uh, and if you have one of them on your squad, it's moments like those, the clutch or kick moments that they can really shine and help, you know, a team that might lose, normally lose the round, come, that would have been a 3-1 uh, uh, lead, you know? Yeah, for especially for uh, Legionnaires, that'd be huge given the fact that they're kind of the underdog in this, yeah. in this matchup here, being the silver team out of the silver gold. But this is only map one. I, I think we're only uh, judging a book by its cover. There is a huge diversity in the map types that we can have in this game. And uh, <laughs> certain maps just speak to certain teams more than others. Yeah, I'm sure we'll get the uh, close quarters map for... I don't know. What other options, I guess, though? There's not really a lot of longer range maps now that downfall and no peek are out of the, out of the picture. Yeah, we could have quarantine. I, I think that's about it. Yeah. Uh, and then we go into we could then either have suburbia or tanker, which, from my personal experience being on a team with Seth, at least he loves tankers. So this could very well be an option. Still got a few rounds left on downfall as we hop in around five. Yeah, some early smokes going out there, trying to cover the rotation onto the, into defensive positions, but Bravo are going to be ready for that. And Legionnaires have been really good about getting people efficiently into some pretty forward locations, and SEAL Team Bravo just weren't, were not expecting that that last round that Legionnaires were defending, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be a little bit more vigilant about that now as 
They're going to try to get themselves a Marsoc win here. And I do believe, as it is going right now, yes, that if the game keeps going as it has been going, you know, Volk wins the entire time, Legionnaires have the advantage. Bit of a slowdown in play. We're kind of seeing a bit more of a spread on the offense from SEAL Team's Bravo's part this time. Using up the entire map here, trying to set up a surrounding of the objective and maybe pushing it at the last minute with all the manpower that they can muster. Going to see them kind of stop at the midpoint, holding angles along this middle road that kind of exists. There's a nice really convenient wall along the entirety of it that provides pretty good cover for being able to look onto this helicopter two-story objective. Taking a gander over to the Legionnaires defense. Seth Bowden's actually able to find Mauho, so there's one less defender to worry about. That Mayo was in the middle hotel, but he got caught out by Seth. The rest of the defenders are pretty close to the objective. Eric is able to be found by Diesel, but Mr. Sirius will get that C4 onto Diesel. Still Team Bravo will lose their first member, but Legionnaires have already lost two, so the advantage is slowly going to their end. But just as I say that, Mr. Sirius evens it up by finding Cool Breeze. By now, Seal Team Bravo have to know that there is a member inside that south or the uh, west red truck. As the entire north push has effectively been shut down. The three remaining members are kind of spread out from the middle to the south. Raz is going to try to make a rotation across there. He's actually going to dive back, try to get to cover, but he's not able to. Ning's Dragon will be able to get him with that PKM kill. You know, just like that, SEAL Team Bravo are two members going against three. It's amazing how Legionnaires have been able to kind of change the tide of war on SEAL Team Bravo. Being able to go from a 3v5 down to a 2v3. Kind of shift things back to their advantage. Now we're kind of seeing... The Legionnaires begin to see what we've been talking about before, which is to just hold very specific angles that limit rotations onto the objective and just try not to be seen until you, you until the enemy crosses that angle. We just passed the one minute remaining mark on this round. It is Stay Calm and Seth Bowden Gaming. Bowden almost finds one. Sirius is going to place a nade. But it's too late. Bowden's going to be on the objective now. Tablet out. Nick's Dragon has to rotate off. He hears it. Now Bowden's gone into... He's not focused on the cap anymore. He's focused on the kill. He hears Nick's Dragon move in. Nick's is able to find the kill on Bowden, shutting down that capping opportunity. 
Calm's able to find Raider. And now it's a 1v1 versus Nyx, Dragon, and Calm. Nyx is going to be able to find that, and Legionnaires will continue their Volk winning streak. I mean, just barely, though, huh? That was... It looked like it was going bad for still Team Bravo. They lost their north push, and the way they were positioned is, was not ideal. Uh, when you lose the north, they, only, they had everyone south, one middle. Didn't really have the uh, ability to pinch on that defense. So it, it allows the defense to just cover one angle. They had Seth try and rotate around north. That was actually a saving grace to the to the to their attack. If he did end up getting that kill, I wonder if he had just found the kill right on the stairs and then pushed forward. If he would have been able to get there a little earlier, uh, and 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 be able to work off of the chaos that was being caused by Staycom on the south, but. Either way, uh, he just dodges the nade, gets right up there. I think he had enough time to sit there and punch in the code. You know? Yes, I I, do, I agree with you on that. I think that was that was definitely his initial idea at first. We did see him kind of check that tablet, go to a spot where he could cap from, but then he heard Nick's dragon coming around the side there, and his uh, his mentality completely shifted to let me find a good angle, let me hold it and try to win this battle, and then I'll worry about that cap later. Talking about Nyx being on this Legionnaires team. He's 8 and 3 right now. Sub. <laughs> he is doing As his work. As a sub, yeah. I mean, <laughs> this is definitely his kind of map right now. I mean, at least he's feeling really good. <laughs> to sort of prove my earlier point, if you have one player that's really outstanding amongst your squad and has the ability to find two or three kills a game, it's enough that you can afford to lose one or two early, that you can afford to be down in players still come out on top. Nynx found, a, 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 I mean, the clutchest of clutch on those doubles. He stopped two caps, basically. Yeah, essentially, he was able to shut down the one side, realize that, hey, this defender has to be coming around on the west side of the objective, maybe going into the basement cap zone. And he just shut that down as well, just holding those angles. We will have a south spawn for the Legionnaires this time. Now remember what I said before. If things are going the way they have been going, Legionnaires will get a map win just from the Volk advantage, as we like to call it. That being where Volk wins every single round, but only one person can win that four point and whoever had Volk first We'll get the map. Yep. Kind of seeing a very similar Legionnaire's defense. They can't fix what's not broke. Or, sorry, a SEAL Team Bravo's defense. They can't fix what's not broke. Just trying to hold angles, maybe trying to identify at least where the spawn is coming from, where the push is coming from as well. And then just tuck in and wait for the attack to come and then deal with the problems in the last minute. Trying to, both teams are just trying to find angles. A couple of shots going off right off the bat. Eric thinks he sees one, but that member of SEAL Team Bravo does duck down. Sirius is able to find Diesel though. Legionnaires are looking for the win this round. They are on map point. It's just what's been killing the Legionnaires this entire map here is that their rotations have been so slow. It gives SEAL Team Bravo ample opportunity to be able to kind of shut down any kind of crossing 
in any kind of open space that they want to go to. Eric's going to rotate to a bit of a more advantageous position, try to find picks on that, but once again, the, the positioning on the SEAL Team Bravo side is just really tight and really hunkered down. Rotations. The the push is being initiated on the Legionnaire side. They're getting pretty close to the objective, but holding spots that are really good for that. Calm's able to find Raider. And Mal is able to find Calm on that refrag. Breeze is able to find Sirius. And now we're into a 3v3 situation with one Resible on Seal Team Bravo. And the one reservable member is Stay Calm. He's able to probably call out where Eric is. And so Breeze is rotating in to try to pressure that. Breeze is able to find Eric. Oh, no. Uh, yes, yes, he is. Eric is downed as well. So he's able to call out Breeze's position. So it's going to be really hard for Breeze to be able to get that confirm. Mayho is going to try to get that refrag. But it's becoming a bit of a ring around the rosy here as they trade in the end. Now we're into a 1v2 situation with Legionnaires on the hard end of that. And Raz will be able to finish that off. Both teams will go to a 3-3. And we're going to have a round decider. Rare instance there. <clears throat> well, maybe not rare, but uh, Nynx missing his shots, ultimately costing him his life at the end. But a nice push from SEAL Team Bravo. I liked the strategy that they had. You know, there are... Their plan was if this team wants to stay tight around objective, we're going to get angles, and then we're going to suppress windows that we suspect they're most likely to be in. It has a chance of not working, right? Because you might not be suppressing the right windows, but they certainly had a plan in mind. They knew where they, what they wanted to do. They wanted to try to cause the audio distraction. They wanted to have Overwatch and, uh, you know, some good rotations coming out there on Mayho. Uh, or, excuse me, uh, yeah, uh, no, that was a uh, cool breeze to get grab himself a couple of kills and i mean now he's eight and five definitely uh saving the defensive round there for his squad yeah breeze and raz are relatively newer to the whole league um they joined in in the league uh, joining gunning the the revival of gunning on mt uh last season and uh they've been putting in work uh for both of their respective teams that they've uh been on being good carries and just being able to learn the game that quickly and becoming powerhouses. Good inspiration to anybody that wants to get into the league. And if you are new, appreciate you stopping by. Feel free to hit the follow button if you haven't already. And if you want to check out more about the league, you can go to vrmasterleague.com. We're going to hop into a round at seven. The deciding round will take downfall. As it stands right now, Legionnaires have the advantage. The Volk advantage has come into play every single round. We're going to see some more advantageous positioning on the Legionnaire side. Seal Team Bravo will have that north spawn. It allows for them to be able to rotate down south if they need to, with coverage from the dunes, kind of facilitating that. Doesn't eh, They're going to send one guy. I'm going to imagine that. Oh, that's going to be Raz. Being able to send one person down there, kind of being visual for the operation is definitely a huge help you don't really have to fire you just have to be able to call out where the enemies are and hopefully not get spotted It 
looks like there is actually one far south on the Legionnaire side. Calm takes some shots, but all those shots will go into the ground directly in front of him without him really knowing. One looks to be in lower uh, dumpster. He tried to shut down a rotation there, but uh, like I said before, he was just too low to the ground to be able to be effective on that front. Eric's going to take some pot shots of his own. Won't find any purchase. Sirius is going to be able to call out Raz's position. Raz has gone to the very far end of the map. He's on the very top of the hill. He's brought a... He doesn't have a sniping loadout. He has a hollow-sided AK-5C. One down, one down. Which anyone who's used the AK-5C in this game know that it's a very reliable gun when it comes to range, but it's not a sniper rifle by any means whatsoever. Raiders able to find Calm, get that Calm from in, and Seal Team Bravo will lose their first member. And it looks like Seth Bowden's going to try to challenge the middle. Basement moving in. Lost Todd's audio. <laughs> but the action's underway. One minute, 15. South is down. Oh, Wilbur's just capping. <laughs> we almost missed that one. Seal Team Bravo snagged the win 5 3.
I hope I'm back now. Hmm. And am I am I coming over the air now? Alrighty, something weird happened. I don't really understand what happened, but uh, Reese. Yeah, I know. I, I'm I'm a little sad about that. I was I was just as pleasantly surprised as you were. I didn't see it coming, but uh, being able to rotate right onto the objective like that, as uh, Breeze definitely did, was something that uh, Eric was not expecting whatsoever. And now, what was supposed to be going in Legionnaire's favor has quickly turned into a cap for Seal Team Bravo, and they will get their first map. You know, if if they are subbing someone out, like so, like they're they're bringing someone in and using a reservist, the chances are that reservist is a potential member. So I'm pretty sure this is a tryout. <laughs> Either that, they just really like Ninx. They just want to play him. He's been incredibly good. He definitely uh, carried Legionnaires through that, even on Marsoc rounds that were not able to be taken. But we will have the North Objective for our first one. This is personally one of my favorite ones because it just brings the action. Mandatory. Mandatory action, action yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of restricts the lanes. Um, it's not really facilitating flanks as so many other maps, but at the same time, it kind of does. If you're willing to invest the time into it by going through another tunnel and uh, kind of coming out, almost becomes a game of onward whack-a-mole. Which way are they going to come out? And being able to devote the people to get over there. Still waiting on the last member of the Legionnaires to get in. Um, we have a Stegen. We have Eric Fallon, Mr. Sirius. We are missing Raider. We're waiting on Raider, at least. Still waiting, no news to report here. I think we're gonna see even slower rounds on this one. Maybe not 
running down the clock as much. We're still waiting on this Legionnaire fifth. We might be in a Legionnaire timeout, so I think we're gonna cut to a brief intermission while we wait for map number two. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> wait, no, uh, no, uh, wow. That's two reservists. Pause. Wow. Being added in now. Legionnaire is clearly, uh, yeah, I can't blame him, right? <laughs> it's uh, yeah. obviously a chaotic time uh, in our world, and I imagine scheduling things comes a little bit. Uh, things change every day, <laughs> right? And I'm, yeah. You know, schedules change every day right now, and can't blame him for having to bring in two subs, but it's going to make it really hard to secure this map and the series against Seal Team Bravo. Yeah, playing with two people, no matter how good they are, Legionnaires are a team that um, they have a special kind of thought. They have, they're a very unique team. They they they're people. They're a bunch of people who mesh well together. They're not like incredibly skilled people. They are very skilled, but not like they're not relying on certain people to carry them through. They rely on their callouts, their their unique callouts, nonetheless, their teamwork, and having a good sense of how each other play to play exception well and it's been very good for them so far but having two reservists in the mix really throws a rock in the blender yeah we've seen it work <laughs> right some, some reservists are super uh skilled and inks obviously doing very good for this legionnaire squad today oz could be another good addition you know um i, I expect him to perform pretty well in this series We'll find out as we hop into round one of map two. Yeah, we just saw him play for Rome versus uh, Blaze, and he did exceptionally well, even though Rome was not able to get that win. But these are two; these are the two reservists to get if you want them. <laughs> and to be able to have them on the same map in the same game, even better for the Legion squad. We'll be seeing the shield coming out from the Legionnaires. Mr. Sirius. We'll be rocking the... Oh, he's just gonna... He's gonna dry pistol it. I think he's gonna try to flick it, actually. He's Nyx is able to find Diesel, but... Some of these teams now, they're completely ignoring the... Whoa, what an amazing C4 is able to find, too. Both of them are resible, but I have a feeling Cool Breeze is going to get that confirmation nade going. Paw is able to find Nynx, but he's not able to get serious before Breeze can nade that. Breeze will also find Paws and Nynx. That's a quadruple right there, I believe. Or no, that's a triple. Well, no matter how what the numbers say, Legionnaires only have two members left at their disposal. From a failed north push. The shield person was not able to find that C4. And as a any good shield player, C4 is the nightmare. C4 is the stuff that you look for on every corner, especially on this map. You gotta real you gotta understand where people are placing them and kinda have a vigilant eye, kinda from that third sense. Or sixth sense. People don't understand what that is, but Legionnaires now are going to focus on a south push after their north side has failed due to the likes of Cool Breeze and Cool Breeze alone. and Ma Maho are going to be uh, tag teaming through the subway here. I don't think. Yeah, the uh, SEAL Team Bravo defense right now isn't as set up for trying to get picks across this middle level. So much as trying to wait for Legionnaires to get onto the objective and then punish them right as they have to make awkward crosses.
Aho and Eric are going to be kind of splitting ways here, trying to cover both ends of the platforms. So far, they have a pretty clear coast ahead of them. But they will have to worry about Stay Calm, who's watching that tunnel, namely the tunnel doorway. And he's watching it in a way that you only really see him once you're approaching the entrance or the uh, the north entrance itself, which at that point, you're not even checking that tunnel door. You're focusing on whoever's on the objective, either having your tablet out or gun out, expecting some uh, kind of counter to that. Maho's going to just cross here without care, and he's going to pay for that. Calm's able to find Eric, and still Team Bravo will take the first map, or first round. They also took the first map. <laughs> yeah, they, they did. Yeah, they did. But, uh, yeah, solid defense kicked off, obviously, uh, by the great plays of Cool Breeze up top on the corner. The C4 snagging two, the confirm kill to pick up one, and then the double with the rifle. It's a lot of work on that corner, and, you know, a lot of offenses are so aware of that sort of defensive style that you'll often see a lot of offensive utility get tossed over into the over those walls, into those corners, uh, you know, deliberately to prevent exactly what Bill Team Bravo did there on the defense and just a solid, solid defensive push off of that objective. Uh, and Bravo's thoroughly snagged that around one. It did get a little dicey, though. I think if Legionnaires had taken control of South, uh, gotten that kill onto, I believe it was... Uh, calm. Yeah, stay calm. It would have been a 2v2, and it would have favored SEAL Team. It would have favored Legionnaires in their positioning, uh, how they could have approached. They would have forced corner peeking. But it could have been a very different story. Yeah, being able to... I recognize that that is a very commonly used spot nowadays with the the tunnel entrance, even the tunnel itself are just great ambush spots on this map. And we've seen them used a lot nowadays. And CLT Bravo were definitely able to recognize that, hey, they're not pushing the north anymore. This has got to be coming from somewhere else. Let's watch the other, the only other entrance there could possibly be. And it worked perfectly. This time, SEAL Team Bravo will be attacking the same objective. We will see the shield coming out of Stay Calm. This map does very much lend itself to good shield play. Kind of looking at his loadout. It looks like he will be going with the shield laser combo. Raz and Diesel will be following it up, or actually leading the push in general. Diesel able to find Sirius. Do you see the nade that got thrown? Oh, it went over. It went over and landed on the ledge above Raz and Staycom and detonated and didn't kill them. Ooh, well, that did. Raz finds Diesel, which is not what you want to be doing, but Zarek's able to find Raz and Calm shutting down that north side. The other two are already they're all they're too committed. They're all down, so they're all still on the radio, but now only one member is alive. And that is Cool Breeze, but he's in a pretty particular, per, he's in a predicament right now. Nick's Dragon, they're kind of facing off through the park bench right now. I think Nix has an idea what's going on, but Breeze maybe not so much, but he's been on fire this entire game, so I wouldn't be surprised if he could pull something off here. He tries to rotate away. Nix tries to take shots at him. Now Breeze knows exactly what's going on. He can either rotate away in a very safe manner. Maybe avoid getting shot. Yeah, he's able to do that. Nix tries to opt for a nade. Won't go far enough anyways, but now Breeze is focused on getting these reses and saving his team. The clock says 426, but there you can only stand two minutes while down before you kind of get uh, taken out of the game because you actually died because you bled out. He's, a, he's racing against the clock here. The invisible clock, per se. I think it'd be really cool if we had little timers above the bodies showing how long they could stay down for. 
Feels the anticipation, the the the, the questioning of the unknown. Will Coolberries make it in time? Yeah. Well, he's running as quick as he can. Doctor Breeze now. Administrator of morphine. <laughs> I'm gonna go for Raz first here, and it'll be Raz's job to get the next guy. Calm. We're gonna see a Res chain here. <laughs> Calm's able to get one, but now he's going to get the hardest one of them all, Diesel. He's in a very precarious position. I can throw a grenade. Hold on a second. He's in a great spot to be able to call out kind of where the Legionnaires are defending themselves from. Nade goes out there. He might, yeah, we'll be able to find Eric. Kind of waited there for a little bit, so that Conqueror will come out. Paul's able to get that refrag. And Stay Calm's going to be... Uh, Using, uh, I'm sorry, Breeze is going to be using Calm in order to be able to kind of lure out Pause, but now there's only two Legionnaires left. Now, Calm is on objective with the shield. He has balanced it properly. Mayho is trying to come around the corner to defend it. He's going to be caught out by Raz, and now the cap is coming out from SEAL Team Bravo. It's going to be relatively unimpeded. Nynx Dragon is coming around the corner now. There are three members of SEAL Team Bravo up, and they take out the last guy. The cap was not able to come out. And Team Bravo will get one point. You can afford to... I guess it's a bit of a dice roll, but you can certainly afford to not get that kill there with three alive and the shield set up properly. I think that they had an opportunity to maybe allow Nynx to peek, see the shield. Then he has to push the shield, get over the shield. There's a lot of steps that he still had to do in order to completely deny the cap. It's a risk because he could have mowed down the two players above the shield, then he peeks the shield and gets a triple and ends the round. But, uh, you know, they just didn't want to, I guess they just didn't want to run that risk, take the guaranteed round and push your lead up 2-0. Something that they only did at the end of map one. And Legionnaires had the perfect opportunity to be able to shut down SEAL Team Bravo if they realized that they have completely secured the north side for a bit there. But they opted just to stay on objective, stick to their guns, and, you know, not worry about what's outside. And uh, ultimately, that kind of became their downfall because they got... Breeze was able to get the res and trigger a res chain, and Bravo got four men up after all that work. It's weird that we see the four detonate no follow-up. Because almost every time now is when C4 comes out from Volk, they know that it's not guaranteed that it's killed somebody. And you often yeah. see a follow-up nade like we did the round before. Uh, or you see, you know, someone rush up and find those confirm kills. That would have been a 1v4 if they had gone up and done that, right? 1v3. Yeah, no, that would have been a 1v... Yeah, 1v4. That could have easily been shifted into Legionnaire's favor and something that... Cool Breeze could not have dealt with, but <laughs> I think I think Breeze was just too annoyed having three people in his three or four people in his ear <laughs> telling him what's going on. <laughs> you know, it is a uh, there's a level to it. There's a degree to it. I'll cut off as the action happens pretty quick here. Yeah, the Legionnaires have actually gotten really aggressive here. Sirius will be bringing that shield this time. He's going to duck just in time for Breeze, but. He doesn't have the kit. Oh, he's able to do it anyway. He's just from dry shooting. Hand-eye coordination is definitely on his side. He's not carrying a laser or a flashlight. He shot, he, oh, he hip fired. Mayho finds Eric though. That's not what you want to be doing. Oh, oh. Nynx does not realize what's going on. That is tragic. That is the, uh... Substitutes coming into play there. Yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about. Legionnaires are a team of people who just... They have a vibe about them. They have a certain play style, and they've stuck to it since Season 2, and... You really can't change that culture. A couple of nades going out. Won't be able to find any purchase. Now, Legionnaires are getting pretty dangerously close to the objective with a shield. And that's not what you want to be doing if you're still Team Bravo. They are already down one man. Pause is able to find Diesel as well. They're down two. Calm's able to get a refrag, but he gets taken down himself from Pause. 
Seth Bowden's able to get a kill himself, but Legionnaires are two and a half men strong. The Rez does come out. Seth Bowden and Raz collapse in, but Ninx is going to find one, but it's not enough. Seal Team Bravo will get their third point. Pretty chaotic push there, and, and such a stark difference to what we saw in Downfall. No one taking their time <laughs> on that approach. They were quick peeking angles, pre-firing angles. It is certainly a, a solid strategy. It got them on objective with smokes out. Right where you want to be. Just the defense was also countered that aggression, right? You have Raz charging through the smoke to find that final kill. It could have gone into a into the hands of Legionnaires, and it could have been tie ball game right now if they hadn't sort of countered with their own with the aggression of their own. Yeah, and a lot of people kind of cower to the smoke. They don't, like, when they see the smoke there, they think, oh, that's dangerous. I don't want to go in there. Well, that's exactly what you have to do. You can catch the enemy off guard by charging straight up into that smoke. They will not expect it. They probably won't even be able to tell what color your uniform is before you shoot them. Really a uh, test of reaction, right? <laughs> As you uh, yeah. sort of challenge the person on the other side. When I come out, I'm going to see you first and kill you first. There's that mentality there. Yeah, or even inside the smoke as well, you, you really only could see, what, three, three, like half a foot in front yeah. of you at thick. most, at best. <laughs> if you're in the thick of it and uh, <laughs> just go in there and knife out. That's the best thing you have on your side is just an instant killer. And just run in there, wreak havoc, run out on the side you're supposed to be on and make the enemy wonder what the heck just happened. I've been in a round four here, no caps so far, but that could change easily this time. Legionnaires are looking to get the points on the board themselves. Seal Team Bravo are looking to get a map. Maybe we'll see a 5-0 with the end of round cap coming out of Bravo again. This time, a couple of shots coming out there. Breeze is gonna try to get some early aggression, some pre-fire going on to a corner. Eric's not gonna peek that, smart decision. Mayo's gonna try to get pretty aggressive here. Oh, I'm sorry, Raz is gonna try to get pretty aggressive. Mayo's gonna shut that down. No. More shots coming out from Breeze as he tries to counter this side here. Nix is gonna toss a nade, won't go far enough. He's gonna try to shoot out there, but I think he vastly underestimates how far, or how unfar Seal Team Bravo has pushed. Seth Bone's able to find Mr. Sirius down on the uh, standard Vol or the standard Marsox spawn point after coming out of the tunnel. And we've gone one minute into the round. Still a bit of a standoff on the north side as Mayho and one member of SEAL Team Bravo, that is Diesel, are squaring off here. I think they're both pretty aware of each other's positioning. Question is, who has the better reaction time? In a very slow peak like this, Mayho does not even recognize that peak from Diesel, even though his head was clearly showing. I think he was waiting for a larger target, but his greed in that sense was the downfall of him, and now that north side has opened up greatly. Okay, Tom's able to find Zarek. Oh, he's able to, uh, no, he's able to find Zarek. Pause is able to find Seth Bowden. And now we're into a 2v3 situation. Both of them are the reservists. Man, Legionnaires know how to get good reservists. Now Diesel's making his approach on the north side. We do have the two members on the south as well, kind of making their approach. They're going to kind of go through the standard route. Try to go by the, uh, the abandoned bed side or the and now the catwalk entrance be able to try to roll up on objective maybe try to get a cap in but pause is gonna roll up here he finds one he finds two 
Yeah, and now SEAL Team Bravo are now at the disadvantage by one man. But it is Diesel. He's very skilled. He can definitely... Oh no! Ninx! The team kills pause, but luckily he's able to get Diesel and... Uh... Oh, <laughs> the generics just scraped their way out of there. Man, the team killing! Yeah, he wanted the last kill. He wanted the glory of that round. <laughs> Had to get rid of his teammates so he can get it. But, yeah, I think the team kills are really just kind of an example of what happens uh, when you try and put yourself at a top-level competitive scene and then, you know, you haven't been playing together for a long time. You don't know how, you're in it, how your teammates move, what their favorite positions are, how quickly they like to get into certain spots, and it can lead to uncertainty. Uh, you don't have the same call-outs for everything, so you don't necessarily know where the person is, even if they tell you. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it can become tough when you have two uh, because you're really relying on the three players on the team to sort of carry the communication uh, and the coordination. But it uh, doesn't seem to be really popping off for Legionnaires here on Subway. Seal Team Bravo. 3-1, oh. and, you know, they did, Legionnaires did a good job of holding there, but like you said, it came down to the two reservists who ended up saving that round. Yeah, I think this, this has been kind of coming up a lot here where the reservists are the uh, the last ones up. Maybe it says something about how the Legionnaires are playing as well. Maybe maybe right. they need to change something and not let the person who's kind of out of the loop in this whole strategizing business to be the last one up. Certainly an unfortunate situation for Legionnaires coming off of a three-game win streak. We now have... Uh, maybe I wouldn't say a disappointing performance, but certainly something that you wouldn't want. You, you'd want your whole your squad of five to show your best, get your best foot forward against a squad like Steel Team Bravo, and uh, you know maybe they can bounce back here. They certainly have been able to get themselves on the board at least on Subway, and might be able to sync up their coordination a little bit more as we hop into round five. Yeah, Subway is a map that I think has to be played a little bit more aggressively. You have these opportunities to kind of make the enemy think what the heck just happened because of this you know linear combat easy flanks it just it, you know very narrow corridors which lends itself to nades flashes smokes but legionnaires kind of have been working in an absence of that they've been trying to play legionnaire style it just hasn't been working for them and it kind of shows evident right here as diesel's able to find eric he's able to find pause as well but that's a trade Bit more of a push coming on the downstairs side. Mr. Sirius once again will be rocking the shield. Mayhem was able to find Diesel. That was a confer. And now still Team Bravo are down one. The Legionnaires have already lost two. The disadvantage is on their side. Raz and one other. That is Ninx Dragon gonna get in a bit of a squabble. Yeah, they both... Raz has been called out. Nix has been called out. But it looks like Nix is feigning the rotation. Is going to try to catch Raz out. But Seth with the C4 is able to find Sirius. He's actually going to go and confirm his kills. He's able to find Mayo in the process as well. And get himself a shield. Now, from personal experience, Seth isn't too much... Or isn't too fond of using the shield, so he might try to hand it off, but or if not, try to use it to his advantage. It looks like he's just gonna try to balance it and be able to peek down his stairwell. Raz able to find Nick's Dragon, and that will be the round. Seal Team Bravo will win Subway and the game. Pretty decisively as well. Yeah, good performance uh, overall. Legionnaires looked, in my opinion, much better on downfall. Obviously, the scoreline reflecting that uh, as they went down to that round seven. But, uh, you know, here, once we got into the close quarters, Seal Team Bravo really showing their strengths, playing coordinated and, you know, together in these tight lanes, landing those C4s, landing the nades, uh, <clears throat> you know, finding the kills they needed. And they just... Did a little bit better job on the overall coordination. I mean, you look at the KDs. They still died plenty of times on SEAL Team Bravo. They didn't have perfect rounds by any means, but 
They just looked more in sync. Well, definitely having Raider in the mix, it was definitely working a lot better for them, but we go into another close range map. It's going to be Suburbia. I almost wonder if this, if this is sort of uh, Legionnaires resigning to their fate and playing a map that they just want to have a good time on. I know Suburbia is a map that gets picked a lot in pubs. Uh, you know, it is a fan favorite for a lot of players uh, that play the game casually and I don't know, you come down to that third map after losing 5-3-4-0, oh, you're down two subs. Uh, maybe, you're, if anything, you're trying to play into your subs' advantage here, uh, since they've been the ones that have been, per been performing so well uh, in this series. Yeah, I think I think Legionnaires is probably, or I'm sorry, I think Suburbia is probably one of the uh, most vanilla maps you can choose in the league. Oh, this is Because it just, it, it's played so often. This is still Team Bravo's pick. Um, so, you know, considering how good they looked on the close, on Subway, it's not a surprise for them to be picking into another tight map. But, uh, yeah, this is this will be interesting. It makes me wonder... I don't know. I just don't know what their what their pregame strategy was. You know, they, <laughs> ban, they ban a long-range map, and then they pick a long-range map, and then they win Subway, and then they pick the close-range map. It's got to just be how they just... feel about the maps, right? Just their <laughs> preference. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the Snow Peak ban was we never play this, and it, it, Snow Peak isn't really played in uh, pubs or comps too often. Right. So uh, there's a little bit of the only time you really get to practice it is in game, in a scrimmage or in a league. When match. when a team who actually kind of puts the time into practicing Snow Peak plays you on it, and then you you know you, you get wiped with it. <laughs> I want to. I've told people this. People have asked me before, like, how much of Onward is knowing the map? And I will tell them about 60%. Being able to know where these spots are that people like to hold and being able to counter them properly is such a huge part of the game that allows for even newer players who just have a good, you know, good ability to be able to map things out in their mind. It gives them such an advantage. That's the case with a lot of esports in general right is a matter of, of honing it i mean you look at uh one of the most prominent esports in the world counter-strike those players are you know throwing grenades over two roofs because they've mastered the angle it's the same thing here players have mastered the nade toss they've mastered the angles they understand how people like to rotate and mr serious is in an aggressive defense position to act off those early rotations Yeah, he's uh, positioned himself right by the Humvee, and being able to see underneath the Humvee can uh, work for him pretty well, but it's not going to be enough to stop Breeze, though, as he's able to find Sirius. There's enough to stop Breeze. Ninx is able to find Diesel. I don't know what's enough to stop Breeze. He's been on fire this entire round. This entire game, per se. A couple of nades go back and forth. Seth Bowden's able to find Ninx. That's actually a trade. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Cool Breeze is going to get a refrag on a Ninx after a Ninx finds Seth. So that's the correction there. Now, Calm is beginning to think about working his way onto the objective from the front door side. Raz is able to find pause. Bottom floor back is down. Legionnaires are two members, one of which is on objective, but that is not the case you want to be in. You are defending having someone off of this projective in particular it's just that is not good news now one thing of note here any any and any good team should know this and this depends on eric's kit when you see the timer up there Sometimes you got to think that it's actually 30 seconds before because you can Molotov the staircase and Molotovs are effective for 30 seconds. Eric does have a Molotov on him. I think that's his game plan is to shut off Seal Team Bravo in the final 30 seconds and prevent them from getting anywhere near the objective. A 
a bit of a slow up in the play now as SEAL Team Bravo kind of slowly work their way toward the objective. We've said this many times before, but they are just a methodical team. They don't leave any angle unchecked. And it's been working remarkably well for them. Ryan's going to make his way out. It looks like the SEAL Team Bravo are going to focus all their energy into coming through that front door, but... Herrick is peeking that pretty hard. He doesn't have to. He only has to watch on objective. Mayhem is able to find Breeze. I think Raz has an idea where Eric is at, but he is the last remaining member. Now it's probably best case scenario for Legionnaires <laughs> to have the one left alive in objective. Oh, yeah. No, definitely. Uh, it's a lot better to be able to die on objective than to get capped on. The, the points explain all as, unlike many other games, getting the objective gets you more points. You don't see that in CSGO or um, Rainbow Six as well. They give you one point. It's kind of what makes this game very unique in an esports sense. You can see by the lasers, they're just trying to check every single angle that they can on their way in. They do know that Eric is upstairs. They don't know his exact positioning, but they don't really need to. They just need to wait for him to make a peek. We're into the final minute of the round here. Eric should be clenching that Molotov. And he's probably just waiting for those beeps to go off in his headset in order to be able to shut down the approach. 15 seconds till he can throw it. He can probably throw it earlier because it takes time to cap. All he has to do is just run away and make sure he doesn't get shot. Six seconds, five. He should be clenching that just about now. But it's gone off. He throws the Molotov over. Oh, he sets himself on fire. The plan goes awry. He tried to shut off the approach. But the hitboxes did not work on him. Really adding insult to injury <laughs> on that last... You, you, uh... you, 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 you want to know what's really messed up about that? Huh. Me and Evo were the ones who pioneered that with Fury, and we did it against Legionnaires probably where they learned it. I killed myself doing the exact same thing. <laughs> no, but it's just... We did it first. is weird, man. <laughs> we did it first, yeah. Yeah, hit the rail on the toss. And uh, detonates it on himself. Not the optimal way to go, but it is one of them. I, I, the nade toss was pretty solid. Went up, went up to, went up to that second floor pretty good. It would have required, uh, you know, him to tuck in pretty tight up there and, and avoid that nade. So I don't know if it would have worked out regardless. But uh, <laughs> unfortunate way to lose your last defender. Right on a cap, though. SEAL Team Bravo now with only one point. This third map. <clears throat> They're looking good today. You know, it, I'm getting some inside news uh, from the Twitch chat that Minx is uh, potentially being tried out right now for the Legionnaires squad. And I think you and me can both agree that he's certainly done quite a good job worthy of being put onto that team after yeah. today's performance. They might be trying out pause too, as well at this rate. Yeah, right. They do have two open spots, so yep. the players have been uh, always been a squad that like to roll around with eight, and uh, even in uh, harder times like these, uh, Ninx and Pause are still available. So that's definitely some good things to look for. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in comparison to you know, depending on your lifestyle, you could actually have a ton of time <laughs> to be practicing yeah. onward uh, or none at all. Those favors depends on. Yeah. Who you work for, I guess. Uh -huh. And what really sucks about that last round is Eric had that one in the bag by throwing the Molotov yeah. on the, uh, the stairwell. But it just... That, those hitboxes, man, they're weird. 
Eric, on the other hand, is going to charge right up to the objective. This is very different from what we've seen from the Legionnaires. Previously, he's not even, he's going to trade with Freeze as well. The shield tries to make its entrance in. That's not going to work as Raz is able to shut that down. That shield entrance is a little too late. Pause makes his entrance in. He's going to get gunned down by Common Raz, but not without going Raz on his own. Calm goes down as well. It's a trade with Maho, but just like that, Seal Team Bravo are able to get another point on Legionnaires. <laughs> That, that really did feel like a pub round. That was everybody trading and everybody dying in the first minute of the round. They charged in. They went one, two up the middle, two on each side. Uh, actually, I think it was three up the middle, two, one on each side. And, uh, you know, they charged in. They almost had, I mean, it came down to a trade, a one-on-one -on -one trade uh, that Steel Team Bravo were fortunate enough to win. But that certainly could have been Legionnaire's Marsoc round in sub one minute time. Yeah, and uh, Legionnaires, I think, on this map, a lot differently than how they do on other ones. They like to play a lot more aggressively. They like to try to force angles and force combat upon the enemy team, not allow them to kind of just slowly work their way up. They want to they wanna bring the action to you. Like we want to bring the action to our viewers. Yeah. We're gonna have an objective switch now. We're gonna have the white car. Another good objective. It's a little bit further out, so we won't have such hard pushes probably coming up in you know mid-range combat. Because the objective's not in the middle this time, unlike the previous one. But this does lend itself to being able to set up a defense a bit more. You know, the, the defense spawn closer, they're able to get to much more advantageous positions and be able to set up a better kill box in the process. I feel like that's the case with a lot of the, with any of those north objectives. It's a little different sometimes depending on where you get that south, that south objective. But in most cases, you get these ones that are on this north street. I agree. It's have a little bit more time to set up and prepare. It definitely makes attacking a lot harder because it is very evident teams are able to find these really good positions and just. Be able to hold them down and prevent people from, you know, slithering, slithering their way onto the objective. A bit of pre-fire coming out from the Legionnaires. Some response from SEAL Team Bravo, but not nearly as much. Diesel's going to try to hold an angle, make sure that no one can get directly across into that front porch, but it looks like Legionnaires are already set up and ready to go. Pause able to find Diesel. And Eric's able to find Seth. This is going very well for the Legionnaires already in the first minute of the round. Oh, and a nice nade might be able to find Raz. It will. It's only a down, though. Cool Breeze could easily go for this res here. <laughs> There's one nade, there could easily be another, but the question is, is the utility available? Looks like some other shots are going to go off. And pause is definitely watching that angle through the fence. It's a very narrow slit to which Pause will be able to see Breeze, and Breeze won't be able to see him back. But pause, oh, he did see him. The laser was pointed that way, but he won't be able to stop the res. This is when that aggressive play style just comes into play. You're able to confirm your kills because you are right on them. And prevent those reses from happening. There's one more resible on SEAL Team Bravo's side. Dr. Breeze is at it again, completely carrying his team through resurrections. He was the last remaining member at one point. Forgot to mention that. But it doesn't look like it's going to be that much of a factor anyways. Eric can shut down this one if he just peeks right about now. But it looks like he's going to just hold his angle like he has been. And allow that res to happen now. Seal Team Bravo are up to three. Legionnaires are still five strong. Eric's going to shoot through the bush. Be able to find Breeze. Down over here. 
Calm has an idea where Eric's is, but Eric's in such a good spot, it's hard to tell exactly where enemies are at. But if he's able to kind of peek through both sets of bushes, keep in mind, that's four layers of bush that he has to look through and be able to find Eric, that's an accomplishment. He's only one of, or Kam is only one of two members remaining on the SEAL Team Bravo side. Being able to find these picks is so huge. Raz is going to get a little bit more aggressive than Kam, though. I don't even think Eric's ready for this. No, he's not. Raz is just too slow. Yeah, he's not going to be ready for that. And now this lane one gets opened up on the Humvee side. Flash goes out, but Sirius isn't acting on it. He was hoping that, I guess, players would accidentally navigate themselves out into the open while flashed, but uh, that didn't happen. The utility has to come out from Seal Team Bravo if they want to find themselves away onto the objective. And I think the objective is the only way they're going to be able to kind of work this out right now. Legionnaires have four people up, Seal Team Bravo have two, and the numbers just don't really add up for the SEALs. Nyx is able to find Calm. Now it's all up to Raz. Raz is getting a little bit more aggressive. I think he realizes that he's the last one up. Nyx as well is getting aggressive. And he's going to be able to find Raz. And Legionnaires will get their first point on Suburbia. Allowing that earlier setup, it just, just looked like Legionnaires were a little bit more prepared that time around. <laughs> and uh, they did a nice job of holding over on that... Uh, West side, the bush hold was key. Find that nade pick and slow everybody down over on that side. You know, and then he also had some great shots and great nades on the east coming in. And just a solid explosive defense from Legionnaires that gets them a lot of kills that they needed uh, and puts them on the board. And and for Raz, you could say that was extra explosive for him. Yeah. As he got down by a great nade. Yeah, there's another, like, there another really good one that Eric tossed as well. I don't think I really caught that one, but no matter. Either way, Legionnaires got their first point on the board here. Something to work off of. They kind of have a uh, defensive strategy that's beginning to work for them. Kind of been more reminiscent of the downfall strategy we saw before. That almost worked for them if it weren't for the fact that they... Uh, had a little bit of a gap on the OBJ on round four, or round seven actually, and uh, let that one, that, that one cap slip through. Both teams are now using up two minutes of the timer, kind of using that to its fullest extent, being able to kind of strategize out here. Typically, Suburbia is not a map where you strategize so much on but uh kind of seeing that a little bit more as we progress here and they things get a little bit higher Pop back into the action round number four of map number three series is already decided we'll play this final map for the mmr Open Bravo looking to snag a certain map. Some immediate pre fire coming out from Legionnaires. Sirius will be rocking that shield again. Legionnaires are going to get a little aggressive, but not nearly as aggressive as we have seen them before on rounds uh, one and two.
Nyx is going to try to pre-fire onto the objective, hoping that he can uh, be able to find some picks onto it, but that won't happen. Uh, Seal Team Bravo are hunkered down and ready for this attack. Seth is peeking through. He's going to be in that concrete barrier. Eric's able to find that. A nade goes just a little too far from Eric, and he's going to live because of that jersey barrier. Cool Breeze will be able to find Maho in the meantime. And now the smokes are coming out here. Legionnaires are looking for a cap. They're going to use these smokes to their advantage. I think Raz is identifying what is going on here. He tries to toss a nade. It goes down by... It's able to find Sirius by going on top of that car roof. That's pretty nifty, even though it hit that trunk. I mean, that was Diesel, by the way, not Raz. I was wondering if I was but watching now it the is... right action. Yeah, no, that was Diesel. I read the name wrong through the smoke. It's a little hard because these names are pretty light, and uh, the smoke's also pretty light, too. And so makes reading a little bit more difficult, but uh, we try. <laughs> <laughs> Nix is going to try to firefight his way onto the objective, tossing some utility out there. It's going to be a flash. I don't think it's close enough to be able to find Calm, but now Calm has an idea. Are you probably very certain about where Nynx is? Because he's been running around a lot behind the house, and you can hear people running around behind the house pretty effectively. And try to look onto the objective, doing some pretty exposed rotations here. He's playing a more like Cold Steelwood rather than Legionnaires right now, but he is the reservist, so that's kind of expected at this point. Pause is going to be rotating through lane four. Once again, we're down to the f two reservists. This has been a reoccurring theme throughout this match here. Reservists are the two... Uh... Tryouts. <laughs> I that's a good question, but I'm just gonna go with what I know. We do have an idea that Nynx is trying out. The pause has been very active. Nynx is able to find calm. A huge pick right on the objective. Seal Team Bravo are still three strong. I don't think that's nearly capable just yet. Raz is going to have the final say on Minx Dragon there. Now there's only one Legionnaire left. It's the final reservist, the pause. He's kind of in a bit of a conundrum behind the white car. As a matter of fact, that'll be the death of him. And Silty Bravo will get three points. That was a solid final pick there from Silt Team Bravo. He got shot underneath uh, that white car in the toes. But finished Ooh. him off. Really slim man. Uh, angle there to, to get Seal Team Bravo map 3, but Legionnaires looked the best they have this entire series on that push, in my opinion. They had great a great early pick. Their smokes were on point. They had two LMGs and a shield on the uh, west side. They had a plan for suppression and pushing. Tried to throw some utility, some flashes. They just didn't quite land how they needed to, uh, which allowed Seal Team Bravo to find the picks that they needed to, but Legionnaires looked good there. You know, it just goes to show you that regardless of who is in that roster, they've been around for long enough that they can sync up and coordinate when they when it uh, when they really focus up. But we just didn't quite see that on Subway. We saw it on Downfall. It's just that Subway map really, you know, it just it just ruined Legionnaires on this series. If they had stayed close, they might have been had an opportunity to be point leaders coming into this third map. It might have changed how they approach it. You know, there's so many what-ifs. That subwave map change, uh, goes a little bit differently, but SEAL Team Bravo rode the momentum. They got it after winning 5-3 on a cap on downfall, and then from there, it's kind of downhill. SEAL Team really just doing a good job of capitalizing off of, off of that first map win. And I mean, they came in strong subway and just shut it down, and here they are. Looking to secure a third map as they go on the offense for round five. Yeah, Legionnaires are 
going to be defending here. They got a bit of a tough job here. They cannot give up another round if they want to be able to get a point on the board here against Bravo. A couple of utility exchanges going on on the Legionnaire's side. Pretty aggressive positioning from the two reservists slash uh, recruits. Nix is going to be down by Diesel. He just didn't have the manpower backing him up there to help him out in that situation. Nade's going to come out. Might be able to find Sirius. It will. Expert nade finding. Run out of uh, Diesel there, but Paws is going to have the final say in that. Calm's going to be able to find Eric. And just like that, Legionnaires are two members. And SEAL Team Bravo are four. It's just not... It's looking pretty uh, solid for, for uh, SEAL Team Bravo as of right now. Pause. Got around the defense, but was not able to find anyone as he was quickly spotted out by either Calm or Breeze. <laughs> And he'll realize he's the last one alive. And uh, of course. charges toward objective. There's usually an expletive that goes along with that. The oh crap moment, if you will. He has only he, he has to take down four people if he wants to get this point here. Or wait for SEAL Team Bravo to run the timer out. But SEAL Team has not been doing that. They've been pretty timely with their attacks and uh i feel like their time management skills are better than uh legionnaires plus two reservists nade goes off i think it went a little long Now Bowden's beginning to work his way toward the OBJ. Mayho is in a great spot to be able to counter him. But he's going to be pretty occupied with the other four members of SEAL Team Bravo that are charging at him. He's able to find Seth now. His position has been given away. Calm or... or I'm sorry, that's cool or calm are going to be looking for that. Raz is able to find Mayho and... Seal Team Bravo will get the three and O oh in this game. Yeah, they looked strong coming into this series. Legionnaires certainly uh, the underdogs, as we mentioned. They're ranked 14th to the Seal Team's 11, but they were competing. Map one, you know, it was in all, in all, in all, for all intents and purposes, we were predicting Legionnaires with a W for Map one because it was going so bulk heavy. But uh, SEAL Team Bravo sort of turned it on when they needed to, and then kept it on for the rest of the series. Yeah, being able to uh, kind of control the battlefield is very key when going up against teams like these, where you like to just try to hold positions. And SEAL Team Bravo were just very, very knowledgeable on the positioning that uh, Legionnaires would be taking. Matter of fact, almost eerie how well they were able to identify these positions. I mean, that could be on Legionnaire's side too, right? They're taking up common spots that you always want to check and the field team might just be checking them appropriately. But yeah, they, they certainly looked like they did their homework uh, before the series. And it's probably why they're so high rank right now as a new team in this season, because they've, they've done their homework and they research the teams before they play. And that's just an assumption, but I, it does seem like that based off of how they play. Yeah. I think with that, we will be signing off here for Friday night. There is a bunch of action this weekend on the VRML. A Sunday is going to be a hot day for some good matches, or at least one good match on Sunday. If you want to tune into that, Water and Globo Chem will be Water getting put to the test. There could be more, so just stay tuned to the website, which is vrmasterleague.com slash onward. You can register for a team, sign up as a reservist, and get links to the Discord, Twitch, and Twitter, where you can really get deep down into the community. Uh, get to know all the players. I also recommend checking out uh, our sponsors, Pro2VR and VR Cover. 
We appreciate them providing uh, prizes for our finalists. And last but not least, make sure to uh, drop in and take a look at the Val tournament uh, that's going on the last week, this weekend, I believe. No, I think it's already finished. But the uh, tournament will be broadcast live next weekend, so you're going to want to turn in, tune into that and catch that. It won't be here, but we'll be sure to tweet out uh, where the broadcast is going live to. It'll most likely be the Val channel. And that's all I got. We'll be signing out. My name's Nightfire with two E's, my co-caster TFH with the swear word. We will see you all this weekend. Take care, everyone.